Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. Today, we are gonna look at this really cool mod quilt. Well, it's not actually a quilt, it's a coverlet. It doesn't have quilting or ties, and it doesn't have batting. So it's a super thin throw or coverlet, something you'd put on the bed maybe in the summertime, but still it's pieced, it's actually appliqued, and piece, and it's still what I would classify at least as a quilt. So to be completely honest with you, when I purchased this quilt at a flea market, my first intent was to harvest the fabric because the fabric is fantastic in this quilt. However, as I grew as a maker and I started up really appreciating quilts, especially vintage and antique quilts, uh, I fell in love with this and I couldn't bear to ever tear it apart, uh, even though the fabrics are cool. Uh, and it is, it has this mod feel. I mean, you can look at it and say, yep, that's definitely from the 1960s, which I do believe it is from the 1960s. And it's bright and, well, all I can think of is groovy. It's a groovy, groovy quilt. Now, I know my friend Ivy is going to make fun of me for saying that, but it is. It's a groovy quilt, and I'm sticking with that. Ivy, you can make fun of me if you'd like. Anyway, let's take a look at this groovy mod 1960s vintage coverlet. One of the things that makes this quilt so cool, I think at least, are the giant blocks. And these blocks measure uh, 13 and a half inches by 13 and a half inches. And I can feel in the seam allowance here that it is a wider seam allowance. Uh, so I would say it's probably the entire block was 14 and a half by 14 and a half and then put in with these sashing stretch strips. Uh, so the maker appliqued these fabrics together and uh, you can tell by the construction chose one as the base in this block it's this one and appliqued to that and then appliqued to that and appliqued over that and kept appliqued over top of each piece giving it this wonderful curve. So it looks like this is this piece here is curved when in reality, the curved pieces are the pieces that are appliqued over it, okay? And that's all done by hand, which is beautiful. The sashing, however, is stitched on by machine, but uh, it, I don't know that that even matters, does it, right? It doesn't matter how it gets done, but it's really cool that it does. There are no cornerstones, so we don't see anything in the corners. Uh, it is just the same sashing throughout. It gives this window effect, which is really neat too. There are some repeated fabrics, which I kind of like. It almost looks like these fabrics are woven underneath different fabrics. And you can see that here with this fabric and it shows up here in this block too. The fabrics are all, uh, they feel like they're 100% cotton for the most part. There's a couple that aren't that might be some suiting fabric or something like that. But overall, it is like 100% cotton fabrics. And the fabrics are just wonderful. My favorite, and it shows up quite a bit, is this one with all the giant polka dots. Isn't that cool? Uh, and we have some stripes with that. And just anything goes. It really, the maker embraced that big feel of the big blocks and then the big print fabrics and even making big pieces within each block, which is really neat and smart, I think. Now let's look at the back. It's hard to tell on camera, but this backing fabric is really neat. It's, it's colorful feathers and I'll take a close up of it, but I still, I doubt it'll show up as neat as it really is. It's almost like hand drawn feathers uh, that are scribbled on and it just has those same colors that uh, you'd associate with that time period of like the 1960s has those bright yellows, pinks, blues, and it looks really cool with the uh, border fabric on this. So I love that too. It is pieced together, but because the fabric is so busy, you can't tell. And it just does look like one giant piece of fabric. Now this quilt is does not have any batting. Like I said in the introduction, it is a coverlet. So there's nothing holding it together. And uh, there isn't surprisingly much wear because of that. Uh, usually you see some wear on the edges. Uh, so either it wasn't used that often or maybe it just held up really well because it was machine stitched on the edges. I'm not sure, but there is nothing in there. It is not quilted at all. Now let's look at the binding or the finish on the edge, I should say. So the edge is finished with a knife edge 
finish so you can see that. So what the maker did was take the quilt top and the backing, put the pretty sides together, like the crafty Gemini always says, and uh, put them together and then stitched around the outside, left an opening and turned it outside right. It was just stitched shut. Also on the binding, to give it a faux look of a binding, the maker top stitched around with matching thread. I think that's really smart because at first glance, it looks like it's a real binding that's put onto this quilt. Let's take a minute and talk about some of these cool fabrics. We see these bright reds and blues and yellows and all these wonderful colors that just work in this. There's this really great fabric that features this purple and green and yellow flowers. There's another one that has the turquoise with little people. It looks like almost a little Dutch boy and a Dutch girl or a Dutch man and a Dutch woman on a checkerboard background. We see this flannel that is a wonderful rainbow plaid and more. It's a really cool quilt and has a lot of fun fabrics in it. As far as condition, it's in pretty good shape. There's a few small holes and uh, there are a few spots where the appliques are lifting. Uh, the appliques are done in, in matching thread to the applique that's being put on and that really hides it. It again gives it that feel movement with the, the curves and I just love that part too. So much we can learn from this quilt, just like all of them, right? Uh, the first lesson I believe the maker can teach us from this is to match our thread to our applique. Now, uh, it is a crazy quilt, and like I've said in my own crazy quilt making that I've been doing, anything goes. And sure, you could just use a blender thread, maybe a gray or something like that. But if you're using an applique and you use matching thread, that applique disappears and you kind of have to look at it and go, how the heck did this maker piece in these curves and that's what this quilt does. It looks like those curves are all pieced in and you can't quite tell which piece was put on top to applique and which piece was on the bottom. And it gives the effect of two uh, curves coming together and I think that was really smart of the maker to match the thread and make sure it was a really good match on all those pieces and then uh, applique them down onto the blocks. Next, let's talk about that backing. I love a quilt that I, when I turn it over and I see the backing is like this fun material, it just, I don't know, makes me happy. It's, it's like a secret on the back, you know? Uh, so consider putting some really cool prints on the back. There's so many neat ones now. Like, can you imagine like a tulip pink on the back of a quilt, even like this? That would be so cool too. And finally, the best lesson we can learn from this maker is to go big. If you're gonna use giant blocks that are 14 inches, use bold prints, use very large pieces in your crazy quilting and just embrace that bigness, that grandeur of this whole quilt. It really adds to it. We see that theme of go big or go home throughout this groovy mod quilt. Thank you all for watching as I uh, explored this cool mod quilt and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. You just click that subscribe button underneath or even the icon that's here with my face in it you, and you can subscribe to my channel. I would love that, that would be great. It is free, there's no cost at all. So please consider subscribing and I hope you have a wonderful week, bye.